This is the Sri Ramana Maharshi Satsang, a time to listen, reflect, and deeply meditate. Know yourself and be always free and at peace. Welcome. I'm Richard Cluck, hosting this satsang. I'm not a teacher or a guru. I'm just a seeker like you, someone who loves the teaching and wants to share it with like-minded people. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi, and we will review Talk 46 today. Let me get it on screen. After hearing the Malayam version of the Upadesa Saram chanted, a devotee asked in a characteristically unsophisticated way about the mind, concentration, and control. The master said that the mind is only a deity of the self with the body. It is a false ego that is created. It creates false phenomena in its turn and appears to move in them. All these are false. The self is the only reality. If the false identity vanishes, the persistence of the reality becomes apparent. It does not mean that reality is not here and now. It is always there and eternally the same. It is also in everyone's experience. For everyone knows that he is. Who is he? Subjectively, who am I? The false ego is associated with objects. This ego itself is its own object. Objectivity is the falsity. Subject is alone the reality. Do not confound yourself with the object, namely the body. This gives rise to the false ego, consequentially of the world and your movement therein with the resulting misery. Do not think yourself to be this, that, or anything. To be so and so, or to be such and such, only leave off the falsity. The reality will reveal itself. The scriptures say that the self is ever present, and yet speak of the removal of ignorance. The self is always and present. How can there be ignorance? For whom is the ignorance? These are contradictory. But such statements are for guiding the earnest seeker in the right way. He does not readily understand the only truth if mentioned in plain words, as in, not thou, nor I, nor these kings. Sri Krishna declared the truth, but Arjuna could not grasp it. Later, Krishna plainly says that people confound him, Krishna, with the body, whereas in reality, he was not born, nor will he die. Still, Arjuna requires the whole Gita for the truth to be made clear to him. Look, the self is only being, not being this or that. It is simple being. Be, and there is an end of the ignorance.
Inquire, for whom is the ignorance? The ego arises when you wake up from sleep. In deep sleep, you do not say that you are sleeping and that you are going to wake up or that you have been sleeping so long, but still you are there. Only when you awake, you say that you have slept. Your wakefulness comprises sleep also in it. Realize your pure being. Let there be no confusion with the body. The body is the result of thoughts. The thoughts will play as usual, but you will not be affected. You are not concerned with the body when asleep, so you can always remain. Something about the questioner brought out an eloquent and complete response from the Maharshi. When asked about the mind, concentration, and control, Ramana responds more deeply than the question asks. He says, the mind is only a density of the self in the body. Ramana tells us the mind has no independent reality. It is only the result of identifying yourself with and as a body. The mind mediates and interacts with the world based on this identification from this stand. Without this misidentification, there is no mind. There is no world either. Are you a body? Then Ramana says, a false, it is a false ego that is created. The mind identifies itself as an entity, a separate individual interacting with an external world occupied by other individuals. This is the ego, but it is not reality. It's just made up an imagined identity. It is false. Was the ego ever real to begin with? Then Ramana says, the self is the only reality. What is real is the always existence, consciousness, awareness. That is what you are. That is all you are. That is reality. What within you is always. This is what is real. Then Ramana says, when false identity vanishes, the reality becomes apparent. <clears throat> the real seems to be covered up by this imagined identity. We think it is reality, that it is who we are and what exists, but it is all just imagination based on assumptions about the world and yourself, the imagination obscures reality. To see reality, we must rid ourselves of the illusion that is based on this imagination. Was it ever true? Ramana says, Object objectivity is the falsity. Subject alone is the reality. The illusion is filled with objects, and your view of the world is only of these objects. Objects come and go. Objects are transient and temporary. 
the awareness which you are is not temporary, it is always. From the subject-object viewpoint, you are the subject. When you see it deeper, there is no separate subject, and you are just existence consciousness. That is reality. Are you an object? Or are you the knower of what is known? Ramana says, identity with the body gives rise to the false ego. The false ego is only the idea that you are the body. Are you a body? The body changes. Do you change? The body is known. Are you the known or are you the knower? Are you the body or are you consciousness? Ramana says the self is ever present and the removal of ignorance is needed. But if self is always and ever present, how can there be ignorance? For whom is the ignorance? The self, the consciousness and existence are always there. The imagination, the illusion of reality is what is temporary. When you see illusion as illusion, ignorance is no longer possible. There is no longer any separate mind or any individual the whole is separate. To be ignorance, there is just one existence consciousness aware of itself. What is ever present within you? Ramana says, even Arjuna, after being told by Krishna that he was not thou, not I, nor these kings, didn't understand. It took much more teaching and introspection before Arjuna could know the truth. Ramana reminds us, though, that this path of spiritual practice and self-knowledge is not easy. Even the best of students, like the hero Arjuna, didn't get it right away when given the teachings, when told the truth, not thou, nor I, nor these kings. It took the teaching of all the other chapters in the Bhagavad Gita for Arjuna to catch on. Learning is for the mind. Realization is deeper than mind, and for most of us, takes time and reflection and meditation and experience. Ramana says, the self is only being, not being this or that. This existence slash consciousness, which is what is aware, is the only thing that exists. This and that are just mental objects with no independent existence of their own. What exists always within you? Ramana concludes with, realize your pure being. Let there be no confusion with the body. It is a matter of identity, of what you take yourself to be. Know yourself as that. Be that. You are that, not the body. Know that. Be that. 
the I am the body idea is just an idea, imagination. Know the reality that you are instead of the imagined existence as a body. So what is needed is just to actually know and experience what is always there to begin with. It is not far away. It is not something else. Know and be what you already are. Don't be confused by the body idea. Just be. What else can you be than what you are? Now we'll listen to my teacher, Nomi, with the discourse, realization of the always real. If you remain free of misidentification with the body, inclusive of all of its characteristics and activities, and if you discern the non-existence of an ego entity, you will realize that your true nature is Satchitananda, being consciousness bliss, without beginning and without an end. How can one realize this self-knowledge? It is imperceptible to the senses and inconceivable in thought. Sri Bhagavan says, how to realize or make more real that which is already real. We could say that if only one unrealizes the unreal, the reality will stand self-evident. The senses and their objects do not determine happiness, do not determine reality, and do not, do not determine your identity. Understand this. Similarly, mere thought does not determine happiness does not determine reality and cannot be your identity. Happiness, reality, and identity are of a singular, singular nature. That nature is your nature, what the self actually is. Inquire within, who am I? The knowledge of the self to be realized is not of a sensory character. The self to be realized is the unsensed, the unborn, and the imperishable. Who is to realize that? The embodied individual cannot do so, for the embodied individual is not real. 
one must look more deeply. What is truly the nature of your existence, of the innermost consciousness? That alone can know or realize itself. That which is other than the self cannot possibly do so. So, discriminate between the self and what is not the self. It is the discrimination of the real and the unreal. That which is unreal never becomes real. The reality never becomes unreal. What is not the self never becomes the self. The self never becomes anything other than what it is. The being consciousness bliss that you are never becomes a limited individual or a body or any other such thing. To suppose that it does is delusion. Inquiry puts an end to such ignorance. Who am I? The infinite and the eternal never becomes of a different nature than what it is. Transcendent of the body, how could you be finite? How could you be transitory? Transcendent of the mind, how could you be limited? How could you be momentary? An inquiry into the one who seems as if in bondage yields liberation or moksha. An inquiry to know the real nature of the apparently embodied individual reveals bodiless, absolute being, Brahman. Let your own light shine upon itself, for the nature of this knowledge is innate and self-luminous. How is one to realize that which is already real? You cannot stand apart from it in order to know it. Likewise, you cannot stand apart from it to be ignorant of it. You exist. Is there ever a time when you cease to exist? That existence should know itself with the knowledge that is natural to it. Thus, Brahman knows Brahman. And there is no unreality. And now we'll take a few minutes and inquire quiet yourself and take a long breath in feel your breathing take a long breath out 
and notice that you exist. You exist and you know that you exist. Now, inquire, investigate within yourself. <clears throat> what is always there? What comes and goes? What is always? Who knows what always knows? When there are no objects of awareness, what remains? <clears throat> Who am I? What is the nature of my existence? Am I a body? Am I the life force within the body? Am I thoughts in the mind? And I am an ego. Am I the quiet of deep sleep? Who am I? What is the nature of my existence? animal flows with a short chest. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om. Peace, peace, peace. All right, questions, comments? Or just want to be peaceful? <laughs> I, I like being reminded about the me and mine. Mm -hmm. And that's really about surrender from. Yeah, me. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, I think maybe getting older is helpful because there's you, you care less and less about mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> or your mm -hmm. own, you know, your own appearances and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that helps. And again, I'm so impressed with this particular talk. The yeah. question was. Uh, a pretty simple and straightforward question and it seems like Ramana gave his whole teaching as his <laughs> response. Yes, yeah, I was going to say that's the whole teaching right there. And, yeah. you know, I still wonder what it was about the questioner that brought this response out in Ramana. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Anyway, I'm grateful for it. Oh, we have another devotee here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that was really good.
Thank you. I like it too. Anyway, namaste and see you next time. See you next time.